Example number four uh, highlights exactly the sort of concept that we're talking about here. You can see that I have a formula U that has three input variables and uh, the X, the Y, and the Z formulas also have three input variables. And I want you to calculate this partial derivative and evaluate it at a specific point. So I want you to do is give example four here a shot. Try to pause the video right now. See if you can work out the details. And then if you feel like you have a good answer, you can either A, go check the solution up online, or unpause the video to watch me go through the solution. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look here at example four. Hopefully you did go through this and you feel pretty confident with your answer. I'm gonna go ahead and try to move through it rather quickly. So I'll note right away that if I wanna calculate my partial derivative of u with respect to s, I'm gonna to have to start by doing a partial derivative of u with respect to x. That's gonna get me four x to the third times y. And then I'll have to do a derivative of x with respect to s, which in this case is going to get me r e to the t. So then I'm going to have to go ahead and add and change things up. I'm going to now have to do a partial derivative with respect to y. It's going to get me x to the fourth plus a 2y z to the third. And then I'd have to do my derivative of y with respect to s which is going to be a 2rs e to the negative t. Finally, I'm going to do a derivative here with respect to z. That's going to get me a 3y squared z squared. And then my partial derivative of z with respect to s is going to be r squared times the sine of t. Now, since I want to evaluate this derivative at, this, at these moments, I'm just going to quickly go ahead and figure out what x, y, and z are at these moments in time. So I'll quickly say that when r is equal to 2, s is equal to 1, and t is equal to 0, we get u, uh, sorry, not u, but uh, x is equal to, what am I going to get here, uh, 2, I think. Looks like y here is also going to come out as 2. And I should get that z should result in 0, since sine of 0 is going to produce 0. Okay, once I have this, it should be easy to evaluate my partial derivative. So I'll say my partial derivative of u with respect to s should be equal to, and let's go ahead and fill in the appropriate pieces. So I'm going to have 4 times 2 to the third times 2 times 2 times e to the 0 plus I'm going to have 2 to the fourth plus 2 times 2 times 0 to the third. That's very nice. Always like to have some zeros thrown around. And then, ooh, notice that this last term is going to be really simple because I'm just going to have a 0 squared in here. And uh, that means that kind of regardless of what the rest of this would have been, I can easily say that this entire last term here is going to turn into zero. All this is also going to turn into zero. So if I calculate this out, let's see, um, I'm going to get uh, two to the third, that's eight. Eight times two is 16, 32, 64. This is 128. And then over here, I'm going to get plus uh, 2 to the 4th power. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Looks like I forgot a little something here. Um, I'm going to have 2 to the 4th power up here, though. I happened to forget. Let me slide this over. I forgot to include my second set of parentheses. Uh, so that was going to be 2 times 2. Uh, times 1 times e to the 0. So that's ultimately going to create here 2 to the 4th times a 2 squared. So I'm going to end up here with 128 plus, what is that going to be, 64, which is a grand total of 192. So there we go. I was able to evaluate this guy at that specific point in time. Hopefully you were able to get the same answer.